Audio Frontier. This is Football Daft with Stephen Purden. Midfield Dynamo and average actor. Chris Toll. Target man. Suspicious character. And... With a top end of Stevenson, Grenada! Welcome to Football Daft, the daftest Scottish football podcast around. My name's Stephen Purden and let's welcome your starting lineup. First, let's welcome a man who's just learned to play the Stereophonic song, I Wouldn't Believe Your Radio, and Metallica song, Nothing Else Matters, on the guitar. It's Grado. Well done, big man. I know, I fancy it a wee notion. I fa- it's probably the last end Wait a minute, hold on. Go and get the guitar. It's in my... F- it's in <laughs> Stephanie's. Go and get the guitar. Go and get the guitar. It was, it was, I just was driving home for Kilmarnock. And then I thought, you know what? Because I went and put, I was so bored that night, right? I, I typed in like top 10 hobbies for men, right? And it was like, <laughs> what is number what? one? I'm, well, um, number one was, uh, fuck, I can't even remember. I think it was something like. Master stuff- Ben. <laughs> <laughs> well, I fucking master that hobby. Um, number one was something like, I think it was, I think it was fishing or something like that. Aye. Could be said. But then one, that the, it came up for the guitar. Um, and I was like, and there was one in Argos for sixty bangers. So I went, fuck it, I'm, I'm, I'm playing that because I done, I done music at uh, school or oh, cooking and grilling. That was number one, and home brewing beer was the other one. Do you know it was number four? Leather working. So I was actually going to start buying leather and make mine wrestling belts. <laughs> By the way, no, listen, you are laughing. A Grado branded wrestling belt. That's going to pull in Aye. fucking money. Well, there's a wee guy up in Aberdeen, man, Paul Martin, fucking cheap plug for that. He sells belts for about two grand. I know. I'd, I'd love that, make a wee fucking shed outside, man. And yeah, mate, just do that for like November to January. Takes care of fun. Nah, well, I know, sad news, guys. It'll take him for November to January to make one fucking belt. <laughs> <laughs> Aye, right, thanks for bringing that up, Bob. Sad news in the front of the pavilion. We'll not get my panto this year, so you can't see his at panto, so... <sighs> Devastated that. Uh, it's it's a weird one. It's going to be the first time in about fifteen years I've not done panto, but and I'm not sharing a dressing room with Grado for two months. And he did send a wee voice note last night. It kind of hurt your heart last night, didn't it, big man? And I, I was just like, that. I was like, I'm just going to miss you. I'm like, I'm not going to get to see you every day. Like this is a hang, and I just think that something will end up happening. You probably will never do panto again, and I'll probably never see you again. <laughs> And he, he sent me that last night and I'm sitting play, playing pro clubs with the boys and I'm like, ah, oh, mate, it's cool, man. I'm still getting a podcast. I'll catch you later. <laughs> <laughs> You're a heartless bastard, man. <laughs> and now, let's welcome a man who this week has discovered steak lawn slices with jalapenos. It's Chris Cole. That's right, by the way. And what you're saying, I agree though, a cheap plug. I found this place that my mate put us on. To. It's called Fallon Inch Farm, right? And it's in <laughs> Stirling, but they deliver. And all the, all the food comes directly for the fucking, for the farm, or the meat and all I'm that. not a big fan of liver, mate. What? Ah! They also do beef, chicken and fish. <laughs> but anyway, football, eh? <laughs> no. Oh, that's how it's finished with the old guitar playing in the sausage chat. So what about you, chat. Stevie? What have you been up to this week? Mate, I'm back. More good news. Well, that wasn't good news about the panel, but I mean, good news is like... River City will be back filming soon, so we're back this week doing camera tests and whatnot, getting everything all sorted. We're going to start back filming very soon, so I've been doing it the old shield inch this week a couple of times. But Troops, on to the football this week. Yeah, what's happening in the old football world, man? Lyndon Dykes, the QPR, I'm there. Uh, I know. I, was no, I, was, I mean, I was totally... On Sunday, but when the football come on, man, and it's, they showed Lyndon Dykes in his trackies and he wasn't playing, I thought, right, man, we, we should be up for this today, man. This is a good wee, this is good for us. Lyndon Dykes not playing. Fucking made absolute fuck all difference at all, man. Oh, Sunday was an absolute nightmare. It was, I felt like I was 19 again. Obviously, we spoke about it on Rangers staff, but I was punching furniture, kicking furniture, <laughs> throwing my hat, shouting at the top of my voice. It was just so fucking frustrating, man. So frustrating. The same old movie for your season, man. Mate, you bang on, man. I mean, I was fucking, I was banging walls, throwing my heart. I was gone absolutely. See that and right at the end where Ryan Ken had a chance and that, that was one of the pure haunts in your face. Oh! Wasn't it? It was I thought it was in, man. I thought it was in. 
I could see it coming, to be honest with you. I know exactly what it's like, obviously. When Selic go up there, they play the same system against Selic as they do against Rangers. And she try to break them down. They're very well organised. They're very fucking well organised, man. <coughs> but that, that's what fucking infuriates me, right? The biggest majority of that team has been there under Gerard the last fucking two, three seasons. They know what they're going up there to play, and Gerard knows what they're going up there to play. And it was just the same static fucking sideways passing to get a blue in the face, man. Three I shots of a whole game. Brutal, man. Ask me this one. Why are you going up to a team that are going to obviously be patting their defence? Two, two fucking uh, banks of five with a goalie. That's what you're playing against. Why are Rangers mm-hmm. playing two defensive midfielders against that? Kamara and Jack, man, in the same team. What is that all about? It was, Kamara was so frustrating. Just slowed everything down. Just, why are these cunts feel to drive forward? Honestly. Yeah. Oh, no. about Selig, Toe? Your team is back playing the old Champions Aye. League qualifiers. Again, it's just Hamilton Aki's all over again, isn't it? You've got to be wary of the level of uh, competition. But job done, man. Professional. Professional as fuck, actually. Out there, never... There, there was no, at no point did that team offer any sort of attacking. They had one effort at goal. And they got a goal chopped off, actually, in the second half. But the guy was a fucking mile and a half offside. But uh, aye, they, they didn't offer anything at all. They, they offered no resistance when Celtic were going forward either. Um, but it, there's still just that. Everything kind of came for the for the wings. We don't have that going through the middle. We've not got it, man. And it's, we need to get somebody. And what, ironically, we've just sold Tom Rogic, I think. Um, and he's like one of two players that I think that we've got that can play that final ball. So... Mm. I don't know what the fuck's going to what the fuck's going to happen for the rest of the season, man. But you're saying, Tol, sounds like the same problem we've got in the middle of the park. There's no penetration from the middle of the park. All your stuff comes through wing for two fullbacks and maybe Kent, maybe Hadji a wee bit, but he's flattened to deceive. And in, in the middle of the park, man, there's we've not really got in coming for the centre, man. Do you know what I mean? Aye, aye, I know. It's, I understand what you're saying about Hadji. I was saying to John yesterday on Celtic Daft. Some I read somebody's tweet. He says. Uh, I've been watching, that's a Rangers fan by the way, I've been watching Hadji for the last four games now and I can confirm that he gets his football talent off his mouth. <laughs> right, so on the show today, we welcome a man who made his name with clubs like Falkirk, Celtic and Hibs before guiding Falkirk to a promotion, a Scottish Cup and winning the Scottish Cup with Inverness. It's John Yogi Hughes. And it's my turn on the Legends Lottery and after Chris's failure last week, I have the chance to go clear at the top of the leaderboard. I can ask you like that. Huh? Uh-huh. And on, on the big question this week, we're saying who is the best player you've seen playing against your team? Plus, another chance to win free beer in the pro set playoff. Details later on. And now, with more ins and outs than a porno movie, it's Chris Toll's Rumour Mill. <laughs> well, lads, I've... I've scoured the scoured the land for for my uh, rumours this week, but the main one, and I know that we've spoke about this guy moving on before, but my my team down in England, Leeds, are sniffing about Ryan Kent. Yeah. Now, uh, saying a deal worth ten million, uh, he's saying that he wants to stay. Personally, I think Rangers would be stupid to take ten million for him because if he has a right good season this season. Then you could maybe get double that. Like right, looking at look if they're if they're wanting to do business the way Celtic are doing it, then that's what they should be looking to do. Um, Bayern Munich have finally sorted out their offer for uh, Arn Hickey, um, one point five million. Now that's he's uh-huh. made, he's been undersold there, in my opinion. He's a right good player. But if, did you ever think you see the day that Bayern Munich were signing a player for the Scottish Championship? Do you think, right, you look at, yeah. right, you look at bloody Liverpool with Andy Robertson, you look at Arsenal with Kieran Tierney, do you think all these big teams just sit and go, look at their team and go, you know what we need, man? Scottish left back. Scottish left back, man. Why try it? Why try it? Because there's Arsenal go Tierney, right? That boy's no bad. There's Liverpool go Andy Robertson. No more we'll trying to sign a wee Scottish boy play left back, see if he's any good. Where did Bayern even <laughs> come about? I mean, right, so... 
Next one, we, we touched on it earlier on. Tom Rogic's nearly away. He's going to Qatar. Now, listen, mm. this guy can't finish 90 minutes in the Scottish weather. How in the name of how in the name of fuck is he going to finish ninety minutes in Qatari weather? Yeah, Jake will finish up. Jake will finish a half in that fucking weather, man. Earlier, you'll need you'll need a fucking half after it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, then we've got Ipswich striker James Norwood remains a target for Dundee United. Mm-hmm. Um, the player and the manager worked together at Tranmere Rovers uh, back in the day. Um, Rangers midfielder Greg Doherty's close to complete a three-year, four hundred thousand move to Hull. He'd America on Tuesday ahead of the transfer. That's a bit of a strange one for me. Doherty down to Hull. I thought um, he'd ended up at Hibs, but I suppose I take it Hibs can't can't afford the four hundred thousand. I would imagine, would you? I, Hank? Don't, I don't know what's happening there. If they've been outbid by Aberdeen for a player, and Aberdeen have been fucking screaming poverty, there's right. something must be going on at Hibs. They, they may have missed out on the Aberdeen striker Sam Crosgrove, but French side Geenkamp are scouring the Scottish player pool and have the D&80's Lawrence Shankland in their sights. Now, yes. French side Geenkamp, can you see Lawrence Shankland banging them in in the fucking <laughs> French second division? Probably, aye. Aye, right. but come on, who's, who's one to go to France? No, I, I, right, no, I can't see him accepting. I thought you meant Jink. He's capable of doing Oh, it. mate, he's capable no. of scoring goals anywhere. No, I can't see him being attracted to that proposition no, unless no. it's like fucking silly money he's getting offered. But I, I don't even think the boy. I mean, he's, he's been on the show. This boy, he looks quite comes across as quite a level he did. But I don't think he'd want to just <laughs> sell out. Do you know what I mean? Do you? I do you think it's I, funny how how we're assessing on assessing him how well he done a podcast. I mean, he was on here. <laughs> <laughs> Seems as if he's got his heat screwed on <laughs> just because he was on this podcast. <laughs> Can't I'm excited to feel diplomatic, man, because I just remembered fuck he's been on this show before. <laughs> and, uh, but fuck, it's as if like, the Gene Camp fucking coaching staff have been like that. Watch him on that fat by daft, man. He talks a lot of sense, man. Put a bed in. Put a bed in. <laughs> Go on well with fucking Shield Suit Bob. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fuck you. <laughs> Fucking check your emails, John. See if Dean Camp are in the, the Patreon. <laughs> Football daft with G4 claims. Been involved in a road traffic accident? Call them now on 01698 767 172. Right, so G4 claims sponsor this show. They're our main sponsors, and we ain't the magic, don't we? We do. They're class. Right, well, so we're going, to roll, we're going to roll the dice now and we're going to see whether we get Jim or Nicole. So who are we getting today? We're getting Jim. Unfortunately, oh, sorry, right, sorry, guys. <laughs> Jesus, Jim, for God's sake. Right, Jim, are you going to tell us about G4 Claims? Absolutely. Right, G4 Claims, specialise in non-fault accidents. If you have a non-fault accident, contact G4 Claims at 01698 767 172. We'll supply you with a replacement vehicle. Get your car repaired. Don't pay your policy excess. You don't have to claim your insurance. Even if the car's a total loss, you still get a vehicle. Even some, I'm feeling generous today. I'm going to pay your commission if you call us today if you have a non fault accident. 01698 767 172. Not at fault claims. Fault claims. Not at fault claims. Not at fault claims. Easy. I'm going to do that stuff. What are putting me right after? Hey, Jim, thanks very much for, for that information about G4 claims. But the only reason I want you on the show is so that we can get one of the fucking jokes off you. Are you going right, to tell okay. us one of the jokes? Right, okay. I'll, I'll give you a treat today, right? right okay. I was having problems with my WhatsApp on my phone, right? right. So I downloaded this thing called Bugs Bunny. Right. So it's actually called WhatsApp Doc. Oh. <laughs> 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 at least we'll <laughs> <we'll> know <know, laughs> we'll any sense on that one, Jim. <laughs> The Legends Lottery on Football Daft. Scott Walker, Mickey Weir, Brian McPhee, Ivo Den Byman is just some of the names we've spoken to as we once again rev up for Legends Lottery. Each week, one of the team is tasked to finding a former hero and getting them on the show. Then you rate how good they were out of five. Mm-hmm. They score this week as Chris failed last week, so the top of the leaderboard is still wee bob at 156 Chris is on 13.9, well, I'm rock bottom with 7.8. It's now Bob's chance to upstretch his lead, but can he deliver? Yeah, do you know what I'm thinking, man? You're nearly catching toll. Fredo. Ah! Yeah. Uh, yes! Well, no, next Listen, week, I'm, closer, I'm closer to you than he is to me. 
Mate, if he gets he gets a good one next week, man, he's he's right up your ass. Well, by the way, that's one every fucking five weeks or something. <laughs> you know what I mean? Every five turns, I'm safe as houses, man. Who I'm was that it? Was... That I, one I, you I, Den Beeman. I what was he? You were that man. Evo Den Byman. <laughs> I, I Evo Den Byman. <laughs> it's been a while for his own, man. Come on. Hey, troops this week, right? Um, I, I got Sunday. I've had a busy, busy week. Busy week back at River City and all that. Uh, so this week, we bit out the box, man. We bit outside the box. Explore <laughs> the Women's Football League. Oh, Scotland. cool. Yeah. Oh, right. The women's Football League, right? Big it up, man. Do you know what I mean? So this week, be no surprise to you, it's an ex Rangers player. Oh. Right? Ex Rangers player. She now plays her trade at Hearts. She's from Grado's neck of the neck Lisa of the Swanson. What? It's Lisa Swanson. Aye. <laughs> <laughs> yes. There you go, you got it. Lisa Swanson. Wait <laughs> right, yeah, a minute, do you know Lisa? I do, aye. I know Lisa. How's it going, Lisa? You alright? How are you? Top of the world. I just, a bit I just of gave, gave, a, gave a few wee hints of who it is I've got this week. Oh, right. Oh, boy. Great. 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 Boom right away, Lisa Swanson. So tell us what you've been doing during lockdown. How's it been treating you? Um, I've been working through it, so I'm working from home now. Um, I was also injured, so I couldn't really do anything training-wise. So I was a wee bit demented with that, but obviously I'm still lucky enough that I was able to work, so I just kind of kept busy that way. So what's the name, Lisa? How did you end up at Hearts? Um, well, when I left um, that I was going to, that was going to, kind of going to be like my last year in football. So just everything that happened with Rangers, um, I wanted to kind of prove myself and get back in the top league again, just the way it ended there for me. Um, I felt as if I had, like, I, I had a point to prove. Um, I'm no longer at Hearts, so uh, they've, they've not officially released me yet. So like, during lockdown, like, I'm going through like, a career change. So, and I've also moved, I've moved up to Coke Bridge. Talk us through your time at Rangers, you're saying the way it ended at Rangers and stuff. Talk us through your time at Rangers and how it ended and stuff. Um, so, I signed on, it was like 10th of August 2007. Um, I got a phone call, I was at a Scotland trial that day and I thought, I thought I'd done well and I thought I was going to be in the team. I scored for like 20, 30 yards out and everything and I thought, I, I think I've made this Scotland team. And then you find, you find it there and then. If you've made it or no, and I never made it. So I went back down the road, all the way back down to Perth. And that night I got a phone call. It was a guy called John McMonigal. And he's like, hi, I'm John McMonigal for Rangers Football Club. He's like, I want you, he's like, you, Stephanie Bean, and another girl um, to come along for a trial at Rangers. It's like, can you be at Annie's Land for this time, whatever? And I was like, I've never even heard of Annie's Land. I didn't even, I didn't even know where that was. I'm just for soul quotes. I've not been to Ayrshire. And, <laughs> Only been the Ibrook, so I'm just thinking, <laughs> like Google Maps, how to get here. So, up, and we've just met this random guy who's introduced himself as John McMonagall and just, just jumped in his car. And then, oh, I could have walked it, I could have walked it differently. <laughs> That's the chance you take. And then, we ended up training for like six weeks, and then we just get kept on beside the Rangers. And then, the season after, the women's team was made, so. We then went up to the women's team together and... Hold on a wee was... minute, sorry for interrupting you, right, but how have you signed for Rangers if they didn't have a women's team yet? What, what? So, they had a, in 2017 they formed an under-17s and that's all they had. Right. And then 2018 the women's team was formed. Right. So, we were aged to go up there. They're going from strength to strength now. I think they, uh, there's a lot of money getting put into both Celtic and Rangers women's teams this year. Uh, um, so, that, that was kind of one of my... My issues, because um, I came back from Finland, I went over there and played for like three months. So I came back from Finland and I spoke to I spoke to the manager because like Celtic were flying, like the way like their women's team were being treated and they were being backed like hundred percent by the guys' team. And I felt that Rangers, we were kind of falling behind a wee bit. So I spoke to the manager about it, just like a general conversation. And also at that same time, like the Rangers women's team were doing a huddle. And we were getting like a massive, massive backlash on social media because of that. People were calling us a disgrace and this is why we don't take the women's team serious and everything. So I spoke to the manager and I was like, we're not getting the backing here of the guys team. 
could just kind of spoke about a few things and then ever since I spoke out about that I was on the bench I was benched like every week and it wasn't as if the team were like winning and it was hard to get in the team I think the team were losing like three four games in a row and then maybe one like win like one nil then go and lose another two or three games and I'm just sitting on the bench like I felt as if I deserved to play and I was doing absolutely everything I could to like, away from football. I ended up seeing um, I ended up seeing like, a sports psychologist and everything. Um, and then the second time I asked, like, why, like, what do I need to do to get back in this team? Uh, she kind of said to me, well, Kamarnock are interested, why don't you go on loan? So Kamarnock played a league below, so I was not too sure like, what to do. So I was like, right, I'll just go because She's mentioned it, so I said, right, I'll go and get game time and prove that I can score goals. So I ended up going on loan to Kilmarnock and we, we played Rangers in a friendly. And then in that same game, I noticed like, my squad number was taken off me, which I thought was a bit, that's a bit unusual. Like, I've had that number for day one. Technically, I'm still a Rangers player because I'm only on loan. Mm-hmm. And then I later found out like, that was done to wind me up, basically. So I ended up... At Kilmarnock, I ended up, I think it was eight games I played. I won, like, top goal scorer. I won player of the month for September. And I won the goal of the season. So I'm thinking to myself, right, surely to God, like, I've made an impression at least. So I goes back up to up to Ibrooks for, like, my final meeting. And then I was told, like, well, basically, you did well at Kilmarnock, but they were, like, a league below, so you should have been doing well. I'm thinking to myself, you sent me there. Like, you sent me there to go and kind of prove myself. Like, there's nothing more I could have done. Nothing more I could have achieved. And then I was told, like, due to my mental health, like, the manager didn't want to, like, be responsible, like, for me going on a downward spiral, like, for no getting game time. So that kind of, that kind of told me that I wasn't in the plans to play. And I felt as if that just kind of, like, totally disregarded like everything that I've kind of been through and overcame because by this point I wasn't like seeing anyone at all like doctors, psychologists like they were happy to sign you off like I progressed so well and I felt as if I would I'm just fighting a losing battle here so that's like why I ended up leaving Rangers in the end I felt as if I, c- I couldn't do any more what right. I was already doing so that is a bit of a rough way to end because I mean you were there like for what how long 10, 10 11 years or something like 11 that? years aye 11 years I mean, yeah. obviously there must have been some mega highlights but in terms of when you, when you play with well, Rangers definitely um, we played a game and we played in Solcoats so we played against a boys team in Solcoats first time ever I like, ever played in my hometown and it meant like my nana got to come and see me so my teammate at the time Jenny Condy she just like overruled the manager she took the armband and gave it to me, so I got to be like captain for the day, like oh, in my yeah. hometown. Like it's probably the most like mean, meaningless game I've ever played in my life. But just like <laughs> a friendly against a boys team, but I got to captain Rangers and my nana was there. Did you so, win? No, don't be one. I think I think it was like a draw. They won by one goal. It was just like a friendly. It was to raise money for so I'll put firework this way so that could go ahead. <laughs> 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 Funny you say that because Great Grado pays for that every year now. <laughs> yeah. I hear him though. Or this year, I hear him They part on this year. Do you feel a wee bit angry that the, these suggestions that you've put forward has got you kind of sin died for them and then now they are now taking these suggestions and moving forward? I, Is I, it, I remember um, we had like a team meeting about it and everything like what, like what do you as, as players think? Like, how do you think the club should be moving forward and what should be happening? And in my final meeting, like that's one of the, the positive things that were said to me. Like you've made me realise like what it's like to be at this football club and the direction it should be going in and everything. So it's as if like she said it, like the manager said to me as well, that if I ever want to come up and let's like, see the younger team because you all knew who I was. So that's like for me that was like saying, Do you know what, a lot of people know you, you've helped to raise the profile of the women's team, but don't really need you anymore. So, it's kinda it's kinda mixed signals, yeah. isn't it? I I'd I'd, I'd tell him to go and take a fuck to herself to be honest with you. <laughs> we know you would <laughs> too. No. Lisa, have you ever thought about now kind of like because there is this kind of insurgence of women's fit and stuff like that? Have you ever thought about like getting into the coaching side of it? Mm-hmm. Um I I probably prefer to coach like younger teams, see like age eleven onwards, like a girls team. Um 
I've done a, like, I've done a wee bit of like, one-to-one coaching, which was good. Um, there's a few a few wee girls who saw coach who are like, on trial with Kilmarnock the now, so I went down and coached them, and that was good. I, I think I enjoyed that more um, than taking like, a team session, so I did. You probably a lot of these young lasses will probably look up to you because you've you've done it with Rangers, you've done it with Kelly and Hart. So a lot of wee lasses are about here that look up to you, are inspired by you. Uh, I don't know. Like, maybe like, maybe in the, maybe when I stop playing, because um, even when I'm coaching, even if it's kids, like, I want to join in. And obviously, I can't. So can't be slightly tackling me. Can't can he, can he be two foot in an eleven year old. So what what do you thinking about the men's first team this season? What are you thinking how we started and stuff? Like, so well, but before Livingston, I was like, we're a certainty. We're a certainty this season. <laughs> then obviously the Livingston game happened, and that's us kind of brought back to earth again. Just uh, it can, seems to be the same every season. Have you no learned your fucking lesson yet? It's the same every, every year. Oh, toll, toll, toll. I was asking Lisa. Thank you. Cheers. Sorry, <laughs> sorry. I apologise. Go ahead, Lisa. Go on, you and Manua. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I know I'm going to have, I need to learn my lesson quick because I'm just getting disappointed all the no, time. Don't, don't, I mean, we can still be optimistic, man. It's, we're still, we've right. only got a couple of points. Do you still. know what? It's the optimism that kills you and it's fucking brilliant watching it. Yeah, yeah. Oh, <laughs> do you know what's going to kill you? Fucking Lisa stays around the corner for you. See me in the week. Oh, she's <laughs> the Well, Lisa, thanks a lot for coming on, pal. I really appreciate you giving up your time and coming on. Hi. Thanks for having me. Oh, right. you, 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 you listen every week, don't you? Every week, I love it. Aye. Right. It's weird. Yeah, and at least all the best way, with your new career and stuff like that. Right, and thanks very much. Well. Thanks a lot, pal. <laughs> Football daft with G4 claims. Been involved in a road traffic accident? Call them now on 01698 767 172. Do you think it'd be good if you, when you went short him, every shop had your size too, especially guys like me and you? <laughs> Imagine a shop that only done my size, I claim, what a buzz. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, there is a company focused on making that happening. You heard the Stitch Fix? Yeah. Right. John, you, you use them, don't you, John? Oh, I, I rave about Stitch Fix. I signed up for them uh, a couple of months ago. In fact, my next delivery arrives next month. Uh, so they say basically send you out, you fill out a wee questionnaire, just all your styles, all your preferences, what you like to wear, cobber wise um, Then they send you out, you can choose what kind of price range you want to do, you can choose designer makes you like, you choose all that. And what they do is, you can have it every couple of months, you can have it once a month, you can have it every uh, a quarter, whatever you want. They send you out a box of kind of clothes, uh, accessories, all that sort of stuff. Um, and then... You just try it on. Anything you don't like, you send back. So it saves you, you know, going to the shops and buying the same old usual copper that you normally would, you know, because I'm always just buying bloody T-shirts and jeans and hoodies. But this gives you, like, because there's all these personal stylists pick out stuff for you. It's absolutely top-notch, I have to say. It, it gives you your own style, eh? Aye, absolutely. Rather, rather, rather than looking like somebody that's just rolled out of bed and put on the first two things that's came to hand. Yeah, can actually, You can actually look quite smart and... I, I'm not used to looking smart, to be honest with you, but it, it definitely is a, a, a great service, I must admit. Aye, so like, you just, you can, is it designer names, any make, like designer makes you want, is that, they get a certain... Yeah. Like, We've got loads of, designer, loads of designer names that, that, that are available, We've got their own design company as well, that they do some really good copy, i got a really nice shirt from their own designers, it's really top notch stuff, and like, like I say... It's not just for men, it's for women as well. And But my missus is really impressed that I went with it because it actually means I'm actually wearing decent clothes for once. She but must not be embarrassed going out to restaurants with you in that any milk, John. Aye, exactly. <laughs> right. So to get, to get started, go to stitchfix.co.uk slash daft to set up your profile and they'll deliver great looks personalised just for you and your colours, your styles and your budget. You pay a £10 styling fee for each fix, which is credited towards anything you keep. Scheduled at any time, there's no subscription required, plus shipping, returns, and exchanges are easy and free. Stitch Fix does the hard work for you, making great style effortless for men and women. So get started today at stitchfix.co.uk slash daft, and make sure to use the show's name to support our podcast. That's stitchfix.co.uk slash daft. Football daft with G4 Claims. Been involved in a road traffic accident? 
Get them now at notitfaultclaims.com. As families reconnect, as shops reopen, as you begin to get out and about again, don't forget your mask. Face coverings are now mandatory in shops and supermarkets across Scotland. So make sure you order yours today from rightdose.co.uk. Right Dose is your personalised pharmacy delivered. And we've got face masks fit for all the family, ready for delivery in just one day. They're safe, light and comfortable from just £2 each or get six for £10 with free delivery. Order now at rightdose.co.uk. Right Dose, your personalised pharmacy delivered. It's once again time to play the pro set playoff to win a case of beer 52 and as Anne didn't beat Gradle last week, Gradle was a victor. It's a Two crate rollover. Uh, so if you don't know how this works, basically we've got the Pro Set playoff cut cards from 91-92 season in my hands here. I'm going to read out the description of a player from that season and the person who buzzes in first um, gets to guess who it is and gets a point first to two wins. And on the line to play today, it is Derek Johnston, not that one. <laughs> how you doing, my man? You good? Good, mate. Good, yourselves? All right, my man, all right. All right, all right. Welcome to the show. I hope you don't draw me, because I get my fucking... I get turned over the last time. <laughs> <laughs> how how clued up in your 91-92 your season footballers, uh, Derek? Well, to be honest, mate, I was born 92, so... Oh, right. <laughs> be, it'll, be a, it'll be a good it'll be a good go for that way but right we'll give it a shot then we'll give it a shot so basically yeah, for three who, 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 would you, who would you like to play um go for a bit of the rivalry I guess we told right we'll draw we'll draw it out the name see who you get alright okay and you are playing Grado! Yeah! If you were born in 92 and Grado knows fuck all about this season, we could be here a long time. Um, <laughs> and remember, I got two right last week, you, you, did, you, you did very well last week, Grado. Yeah, boss act. Right, okay. uh, remember, first to two wins it. Uh, Grado, what's your buzzer going to be? Me. <laughs> Derek, what's yours? Go out, we're playing for free swally. Free swally, right, okay, let's go for it then. <laughs> Uh, so I'll read out the description. First person to buzz in gets to answer it, but if you do buzz in, you can't come back in. The other person gets to answer. Ready? Yeah. Right, okay. This player uh, made his league debut for Dundee in 1980, spending four seasons at Dens Park before joining the Dons. He is now in his ninth season as a regular in the Pataudry defence. He has represented his country under 21 and full level, making his senior bow against England in the Rouse Cup in 1989. He began his career with junior club Banks AD, who is a Scotland international right back for Aberdeen. I'll turn the card over. What knows, man? Is that Snow Neil Simpson? I had someone fucking man, I know. Or is it Sheena? No, both wrong. McKimmy? It's Stuart McKimmy, unlucky. <laughs> You're not getting the point for that. <laughs> you gave your answer. Right, this okay. one. On to the next one. Hopefully, you should get this. This person was a big money transfer from Aberdeen, spending five seasons at Petrodre before signing for Rangers on the eve of the season. He is a highly rated left back. Free Swally. No, I'm dead! Dave no, Robertson. No. Ah, you bastard. We're just talking about him. Yeah. Dave Robertson, 1 0, well. Derek. On to the next player. This player was on the books at Hibs as a youngster, but he was released and subsequently played for Raithovers and Dundee. He was top scorer for the Dens Park Club last season with 18 goals in the first division, prompting Hibs to pay 500000 for his services. In his youth, he was a keen supporter of Hibs and his fine form this season has been a key factor in their Skull Cup success. Striker for Hibs. I'll turn, the card, I'll turn the card over so you can see who it is. What players <laughs> that? Uh, no, nah, that's not him. I was going to say Keith Wright, but that's not it him. It is Keith Wright. Well done. <laughs> <laughs> Next player, this is, the, this is for the win. You ready for this? This player was introduced to the Premier League action by Hibs in 1985. He spent five seasons as an automatic choice before joining Celtic in 1990. A full cap for Scotland, he was a member of the World Squad Cup squad for Italy, although he did not make an appearance. In his first season at Celtic Park, he scored 
a, a solitary league goal, but on the opening day of this season, he scored twice in the victory over Dundee United. Hibs oh. winger, moved to Celtic, Scotland oh. International. Do you want me to turn the card over? I go, go, go. Oh, they cracked it! What do you call Pedro, him? They've got to manage Pedro, them. Pedro. I've got it. And you give me two seconds to get it. John Collins. 2 1 Grado! Oh! 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 He's the best at this game, boys. He's brilliant at this game. <laughs> I know <I'm. laughs> Sorry, Derek, but that does mean, however, it is a three crate rollover next week on the show. So if you want to get involved, you can do that. Oh, Tweet us yeah. at Football Daft Pod. You need to be over 18, live in the UK. And remember, Beer 52 is a monthly subscription service for beer. They source it from all across the world from some of the greatest small batch breweries. And if you fancy free beer, getting a carry out, you can do that right now. Beer52.com forward slash daft. All we'll do is charge you 4 95 for the postage and packaging. So you'll get a crate of beer for just 4 95 which is good news. So head there right now. Beer52.com forward slash <coughs> Football daft. Big question. Right, Kev, so some players that come up against your side that you just have to sit back and admire. So this week, we asked, who is the best player you've ever seen against your side? What do you think, boys? For me, it's Ronald. Ronaldinho is mine and us too. Ronaldinho, um, yeah. Messi, fucking. Uh, there's been so many. Honestly, seeing the Champions League nights at Parkhead, so, Cristiano Ronaldo, Wayne Rooney was Aye. fucking unplayable. Wayne Rooney was you know, incredible. Do you know who was why the best players I've ever ever seen at Ibrox? Lillian Turan when he played for Parkhead. Parma, Parma game, I remember that. Mm-hmm. Do you remember, do you remember Raquel me against Rangers? Oh, mate. Yeah, yeah. Different club. Mendieta, but man, Mendieta was fucking, he played for Valencia and all that. That's right. That, that was the year they went to the final, wasn't it? Aye, aye. Did, aye. did before no play for Parma as well when, when Rangers aye. played? Aye. Oh, aye. That was... And he said, he done an interview no longer saying it's the best act, why the best artist he's ever experienced in life. Uh, Del Piero. Sure Del Piero. Del Piero. Del Piero. Paolo Maldini. Yeah, Fuck sake, that. man. Honestly, see when you think about it. Uh, see, Dorf, Kaka. Kaka for AC Milan against us, man. Fucking hell. Aye. We played you know, we played Kaka in a friendly, and I think Beckham played as well. That was a, that was a good win. Well, I'll tell, you, I'll tell you one. The best one ever at Parkhead, and we mentioned him when uh, when Kevin Harper was on, Robert Prozanetsky. Was Aye. Unbelievable against Celtic, man. One of the best performances for a player I've ever seen at Ibrox in the Champions League is when Leon came to Ibrox after we'd pumped him 3 0. Ben, Benzema. Benzema scored a hat trick. He absolutely fucking destroyed us, man. Honestly, he was so good. Aye. Did that even know Mr. Settle right before they aye. scored the aye. goals? Aye. Absolutely. That was actually a blessing in disguise, to be honest with you. But anyway. We've got some you know, listeners have said, Alan has said, Mendieta for Valencia Ibrox. Boy, totally ran the show. Couldn't agree more, Alan. Fraser says, Kaka, when he was still the Ballon d'Or holder, just to be subbed for Ronaldinho when Pompey drew 2-2 at Fratton Park with AC Milan. My abiding memory of that game is Stan Collimore on commentary saying he beat his hat if Ronaldinho scores from a free kick, which, of course, Ronaldinho did, to which he replied, I'm glad that I'm nowhere in the hat. <laughs> There we go. Callum says Wayne Rooney against Aberdeen played in a friendly with United, or it could have been a testimonial. He can't quite remember. Dave says it's to be. It has to be Del Piero, the Juventus team that came to Ibrox in '95. Peak levels of Italian football and all its glory. Serie A on Channel Four every week when football was football. Mate, do you remember Alec Clellan still looking for fucking Del Piero? The now. <laughs> He's still, he's still earlier, man. He's still earlier. He's still, because I remember like, he, he nearly got him, then he just got his absolute breaks pulled in. He's still earlier. He's still entering, looking for Alessandro now. I think B- Pierre Billy Thompson was in goals with two legs, I know. I know. <laughs> Mark says, yeah, yeah, Toure for Barcelona at Parkhead. Absolutely controlled the game and hardly moved for the centre circle. Gordon says, Van der Vaart, Spurs versus Hats. He ran a show at Tiny and a 5 now win for them. Robert says, actually mentions the one that you said, Karen Benzema against Rangers. Almost as good a player as Jean-Claude, Jean-Claude Darsfield. Oh, calm down, Robert. Calm down, Robert. He wasn't that good, no, I mean. Mate- Jim says, Matthias Sammer for Dortmund against Motherwell. What a player Sammer was. What a player. Incredible. Incredible player. 
uh, Sean says Mbappe against Celtic in the Champions League a couple of seasons ago. Oh, I'm still okay. I'm still waking up in cold sweats about that night. Mbappe who had you on toast that night uh, single handedly, it was unbelievable. Aye, so was Cavani and so was fucking Neymar as well. <laughs> yeah, <you> know, <laughs> I mean, what you meant to do against that? Ross has got a good one all the way from Falkirk. He says, Brian Lowe's up and Paul Gascoigne in the mid 90s versus Falkirk, both at Brockville and at Ibrooks. I would have that game. Peter Hoos, I, I think. Freeze that mm-hmm. day. Aidan says, Moussa Dembele, wife of a Morton <laughs> fan, eh? <laughs> <laughs> David says, Hibs, an 18-year-old by the name of Lionel Messi, ran the show, ran the snow with Thierry Henry and Ronaldinho in a preheated season friendly. A preheated Poor season Lou- friendly. <laughs> <laughs> Poor wee Louis Stevenson never stood a chance. <laughs> I remember that. I remember they played Hibs in Dundee United pre-season. Uh, brilliant. Um, Stephen says, Raquel May was unreal against Ranger. The cigar was out all night. Uh, Jason says Gaza v Hibs 7 now at Ibrox he done us that day and he even get done by the ref Daniel says Red Star Belgrade legend Prosinecki scored at, uh, smoked about 80 fags a day and stole about the park with slippers and a pipe as they humped Rangers final in Belgrade guy was pinging 60 yards <laughs> within an inch of a target every time there you go man that's what Rab- you get me 80 fags and a pipe Rab <laughs> says Men- Mendieta as well Rab saying <laughs> Mendieta Stu says Wesley Schneider when Falkirk beat Ajax 2 like, right wait a minute right wait a minute this is true it's true Ajax came over in a pre-season friendly they had all their big players for Malin was playing Schneider was playing who else was playing oh, it, was a, it was a big Ajax team and we beat them 2-1 fucking yeah. hell how long, how long ago was that that was when the stadium first opened this is about 10 years ago about true. 10 years ago so you're looking at longer than that nah. I would have been longer than that it would have been uh, 16 years ago, aye. So, was Zlatan, was Zlatan there? Uh, Zlatan wasn't playing with them at the time, no. Right, Zlatan oh. Because it would have been 8-2 eight, eight a fucking Ajax if Zlatan <laughs> had been playing. <laughs> and Bob, he doesn't give the details, he doesn't give the details of who he supports, but he simply says, Kevin Kyle. Oh, how could I forget about Big Kev, man? What a fuck? Let me tell you a wee bit about Express VPN, right? And he's ever heard of that? Yes. Yeah. Uh, I've got this on my phone. I've got it on my laptop. It helps me access the internet as if you're in a different country. Sometimes Netflix is in our country. Show better content. You can just switch it to that specific country and you can watch it. It's got different shows and movies. And it just it depends where you are, what, what, what you choose within Express VPN. There's thousands of new shows and movies for streaming libraries around the globe. There are hundreds of VPNs out there, but Express VPN is ridiculously fast. Does not affect your internet connection at all. You can stream everything in HD with absolute zero buffering. It's available on every device, your phone, your laptop, tablets, even your telly. You can install it, and I've installed it in my, my Fire Stick as well. It, help, it works in many streaming services, like I said, Amazon Prime, iPlayer, YouTube, and many more. So if you've gone on hold, you can catch up with all different, you can catch up with Coronation Street or uh, EastEnders on BBC iPlayer, many, many more. You can choose from almost 100 different countries. It's so simple to use. Just fire up the Express VPN app, change your location, hit connect, then refresh the page, and the show or movie you want to watch will magically appear. See, I, I use uh, the VPN as well, Gredo, and I've been watching Brooklyn Nine-Nine on the Canadian Netflix. Gives you access to more gives you access to more series than the UK one does. So, it's honestly, it's brilliant, man. All right, well, you can use the link right now. You go to expressvpn.com slash daft, and you can get an extra three months of ExpressVPN for free. That's expressvpn.com slash daft. Right, now let's introduce a man who is a player, was a Falkirk legend and played for both his boyhood heroes, Hibs and Celtic. As a manager, he twice won the first division with Falkirk as well as a successful stint at Hibs and Livingston and went on to win the manager of the year after winning the Scottish Cup with Inverness Caledonian Thistle. It's John Yogi Hughes. How you doing, Yogi? Thanks for coming uh, on. I'm doing great. I'm doing great. Uh, uh, they're, they're fancy glasses, aren't they? Uh, Aye, sir. I've, I've not put mine on. They're not my right. glasses. They're not mine. <laughs> <laughs> They're a boy. Wait, 
Giorgio Armani. You <laughs> <laughs> can't, can't hide that, John. You can't hide that, mate. Uh, hey, how's you, how have you been? How, how's lockdown been, mate? How have you been off through this? I'm all right. Honestly, because I just do my own stuff. I'm right into uh, doing the gym. I've got my wee gym out of the back. I'm right into uh, cycling. Uh, I cycle with John Collins. Uh, so I'm away. We're away for a couple of hours. And I just keep myself fit, ticking over. But it is hard. You miss the football, don't you? Oh, oh, big time, and big everything, time. everything that's just happened in the last couple of weeks in terms of the Aberdeen boys and the Celtic scenario, it feels like Celtic kind of get started. Although they had a great result, great result last night. Um, you know, but we just want to get it going and get in the swing of it, and because that's it, that's what gives us all our talking points. Exactly, mate. I was missing the football right up until Sunday there when Rangers went to Livingston. I wish it was cancelled again, mate. You know what I mean? <laughs> What was the last job you applied for? Last job I applied for, I actually had a job, I had an interview about two two months ago now, over in uh, Scandinavia. I, think, I thought I had the job, very, very close to getting it, but it never materialised. It was doing the last two and the other guy got it, so, so that's, just, that's, love, that's the way it goes. I love hearing about stuff like that. It's like, how do you, how do you know these jobs are up for grabs? Are you, are you in a wee database or something like that? No, no, just... nah, I don't even deal with an agent now. My agent, I had Bill McMurdo when I, in my early career, then I moved on to Raymond Sparks. Over the last, since I left Inverness, I've not really got an agent. Uh, so it's just dumping and diving, word of mouth, and all your contacts. He says, listen, there might be something happening over there. So... It's like when you're in the management game, you're talking to that many agents and you get to know them, you become friends with them. So I saw these guys that try to do your turn. It's very difficult to get back in. It's something that I'm looking to do. When I left in my mess for the first couple of years, I was determined to take a couple of years off. The, the kids were growing up and the wife's uh, parents, uh, the two of them were dementia in, in the nursing home. So... I could see the pressure on her. I was away from home and I said, right, once once I'm finished here, I'm coming back, I'm going to take a year to two years off. And once that happens, you start enjoying yourself, playing all the golf, cycling, doing all the stuff that you want to do. But I always promised myself, I always wanted to see my kids growing up. Now, that was now at their 18, they're tapping you for 20 quids every 20 minutes. Yeah, at least 20. It used to be a couple of quid, now it's 20 quids. <laughs> Tell me about it, John. Tell me about it. Um, so, getting back to you, your career, you started off in the juniors, didn't you? Aye, I started off with Newton Green Star with the Ranger strips. Aye, but did you, know start, did you know start off as a striker, John? No, 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 in the juniors, not. In, uh, in the juniors, um, I played in midfield. Right. And the, the Newton Green Star, it was all that. It's like what you'll get doing in Ayrshire. All the teams, all the mining villages, all had teams Newton Green, Jarniston, Bonnerick, all that stuff. So very competitive. And that was probably my first time I started playing men's football because I was what, 18 at the time, 18, 19, playing against ex pros, getting stuck in and really playing men's football. Loved it. Absolutely. I'll tell you what I loved about it. I loved the social life because I'm over competing against all these guys. All the junior boys that come from Edinburgh, once your game was finished, you were back up the tune in Edinburgh. And everybody, you know, we all went to our certain bits. and You got to know them all in a couple of babies before you know it. You're a night out up the tune. So it was absolutely fantastic. <laughs> brilliant, brilliant. So I was just going to say, then you moved on to Berwick Rangers. Um, how, how did you end up going for uh, midfield? I believe you went up to striker at Berwick Rangers. And then how did you end up moving back to centre half? Well, it was Berwick Rangers. When I went to Berwick Rangers, Jim Jeffries come in and Bully Brown. They weren't there when I first went. They come in and the two, we never had it off great because I was, I was a little bit uh, pissed off that they had sacked the old manager. Right. Uh, and I never knew Jim and Bully at the time. Uh, and they were trying to send me back to Newton Green Star because of that. But eventually it all calmed down and I got playing for them. And it was him that says, right, we couldn't win a game. And it him that says, right, I'll put you up centre forward. I think we went 22 games unbeaten. But it wasn't a centre forward with movement like Larson or McCoy to these guys. There's more than a batter than that. I've got banged up there. And if the centre half was daft, daft enough to put his, try to put his head on it, then it was all that <laughs> stuff. 
Yeah, and that's yeah. what it was. And I made sure it was available and fell down. And I put my head in where other guys oof, didn't fancy it. We went 22 games unbeaten. And he sold, he sold me down as a centre forward to Swansea City. But I was still part time. See, the juniors and Berwick Rangers were part time. I was a painter and decorator. So when I got sold to Swansea City, that was me going into full time football. And that was like, that was at the age of 20, 20, 23, 24. And that was like, wow, you know, just the tempo and the standard of training and the quality of player. And I was never a centre forward, so I was really struggling. I'm saying, this is no for me. But I kept my head down, kept plugging away, plugging away. Uh, and some good times doing there. And I played with some good players, boy, Robbie James, Alan Curtis, Tommy Hutchison. But Chris Coleman mm -hmm. uh, was the left back, so real good times. And I can remember playing in the FA Cup with, with Drew Liverpool at Swansea at the Vetch. It's not what like Swansea is now, trust me, it was a shithole. <laughs> and we were there at the Vetch. And the gym, the pitch was there, and the jail was right next to it. And you're driving in, and they were all out the window, gave you pelters, <laughs> going into training, and, and you're just a roof. Two's up, two's up on your sentence and all that. And the boys should be doing, is that right? I'm getting out tomorrow and he says, and I'll be doing to see you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what, what? Uh, That's brilliant, but so, so you were like 20, what age were you when, you when you went professional, like full time? So, no, so that's what I'm saying. I've come right through, right through the juniors, part time and full time. That was 24 at Swansea. And it, That's quite just, late, late one, isn't it? That's quite late for a football player, you know, to be in that right. position. Did you ever well, think you it was before that? No. You wouldn't make it? No, because you want to know someone. At a young age, we, we all played juvenile. We all played against each other. If I tell you the players, guys like Paul Kane, Darren Jackson, John Robertson, Gary Mackay, David Bowman, Big Gordon Marshall, we all played against mm -hmm. each other. And we were all in training at Hibs on Hearts. I was in training at Hibs two nights a week when I was 15. You're saying, I'm going full-time professional as soon as I leave school. That's all I want to do. And it never materialised. And my ma says, right, you're, you're going to become a painter and decorator. You're going to get a trade. But it was that disappointment that could either make you or break you. And I always had it in me to say, I'll prove you wrong. I'll prove you wrong. Right. And that's where right. even then, I, and it was just a case of finding somewhere that I could enjoy my football. The next step, I couldn't get senior, so the next step was going junior, and then Ferreira building your name, building your reputation, and then, and then a bit of luck. I have to say that a bit of luck because, as I say, I met Jim Jeffries. Jim Jeffries uh, brought a real professionalism to Berwick, although it was only part time. Uh, and he sold me to Swansea, but um, he then got the Falkirk job. And you see how some managers go back for their old players because you know the character. And when he got the Falkirk job, he brought me back to Falkirk. The problem was he brought me back as a centre forward, and I was never a centre forward. And that's where that's it goes back to the question. That's where I found my feet, a centre half. It was like, wow, who turned the light off? The whole game is in front of me. Well, this suits me. I loved attacking the ball in the air. I knew my strengths. Played at Brockville. If any of you guys remember Brockville, it was a shit. I remember it. I was at yeah, Brockville quite a lot, so I was, uh, my dad was really friendly with Peter Heatherston, so we went we went uh, to Brockville quite a lot, so we did when I was younger, I loved it. Well, did you saw John there? John, John, were you ever there? I was there all the time, I was there all the time. Uh, he's, at, yeah. he's, at a he's at a Cheshire cap when you mentioned Brockville there. I know, uh, but John, yeah. when I mention Brockville, when I say a shithole, I mean that in a, oh. in a proper, it was our shithole, it was our palace, it was our chapel. And you, when you come into the side, John, I mean, you didn't have to play up front. You had Simon Stainrod, you had like a Richie Cadet, all the Ken McAllister. I mean, what a well, team played in. It was me and Stainrod then, Sammy McGovern hit the scene. Sammy that really was, took man. it. With, Sammy was different class. And as you say, Silky Harrison, Peter Big Crawford Barty. Um, but the players that Jim Jeffrey was recruiting for Falkirk, Eventually, you're talking about guys like Kevin McAllister, Simon Stainrod, Tommy McQueen, Alec Taylor, you're saying, right, we've got to do something here. And I was just grateful and thankful that I found my position in the team. And I loved it. And I loved the, the attitude that Jim Jeffries brought to it. In terms of Brockville being small, tight, 
the goalkeeper could kick it from box to box. We were right up against boys, right in their faces, right up against them, man for man. And Jim Jeffries, you make sure you get the better of them. So anyone that come to Brockville, you were up for it. And they knew they were in a battle. Many a times we gave Celtic a many, many a game at, at Brockville. In fact, I broke my ankle, uh, trying to tackle Collins and my studs caught in the, in the turf. And my whole body weight come over the top and snapped my ankle. And that was ah. moot for six. And that was moot for a long, long time. And it wasn't until the next again year that I signed for Celtic. Once I signed for Celtic, Tommy Burns was saying he was going to sign me the year before, but I broke my ankle. So once again, a little bit of luck that that opportunity was still there. I mean, did you give John Collins a bit half a mile a start on the bike and then just get that that thought in your head? And just chase fuck out <laughs> on the bike. I'm getting you Collins. I'm, I'm on you one for that. Is that a seat? Well, see when you, you're cycling with Collins, he has to wear a square here helmet because he's got that square heat. <laughs> 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 but you'll never trust me. No matter how much I cycle, you'll never catch him. He's a machine. Uh, he's an absolute <laughs> machine. Is he still like that? Eh? Is he still as fit as ever? Oh, he's as fit as a fiddle. Mind, he's on, he's on the carbon, he's on the carbon fiber uh, road bike. I'm on the chopper. <laughs> <laughs> Does he cycle with his tap off, Nora? No, he's no, see that stuff. Honestly, see if see if you got to meet him. He's the most funniest guy. He loves the banter. Loves the banter. Um, and he's a bit of banter. Is his banter is he's a bit serious. Oh, you yeah. get up with golf with him and cycle with him, and, uh, and you get a right good laugh. And he just laughs at all that stuff. What can I do? What can I do? But he's got the six pack. He's still, he's still on a machine. Aye, uh, uh, I've always called him Top Gun here, cut. Because uh, he, he looks like he should be in Top Gun. Oh, I know. He was a king in the gym at uh, Celtic until the Yorkster walked in. I said, ah! Yorkster, brilliant. You'll need, you'll need to use his phone number so we can get him on the show, John. Uh, you'll get a laugh. You, honestly, you'll get a laugh. He, he's oh, done me. He's done me. He gets me. He's got a place in Monaco. He still kept his wee place, and he says, "Come on." He says, "We'll go over for a week." He says, "We'll, we'll, we'll go cycling." There's that wee daft dog. We'll go cycling. <laughs> so we went over with his place and all that. So we went into the garage, and he's got the Union Jack um, mini. You know, the, the British aye, 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 So aye. He's, he's showing me a boot and he says, right, he says, come on, I'll show you where the Grand Prix starts and he's driving a boot. When you get, I don't know if you've been in Monaco, but when you get up the top of the square, the print, whatever it's called, it's the big hotel and the casino and every, all the top motors and all that are there. He says, when we're up there, he says, listen, he says, when I pull up in the car, you just get out and stand next to it. He says, because we'll not get parked. It's all the concierge come out for the hotel and all that. So he comes in parts, I get out, stand next to it, he's up talking to them, he's shaking hands with them all, cuddling them all, and I see them all laughing and all pointing and doing, pissing themselves, laughing all that. So he comes down and he's getting out all the French chat. So eventually all I, all I heard was bodyguard. And I turn around and say, what? He says, I just told you you're my bodyguard watching the car, watching the road. <laughs> 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 I, just, by the way, if it, John Collins was driving about Glasgow with a Union Jack and his motor, he did a fucking no, bodyguard. No, I know. I know. Hey, <laughs> hey, don't worry, I tortured him for it. I tortured him. <laughs> but even then, Monaco, Monaco's all hills. And we're on the bike and he's away. And I say, oh, you need to come down a couple of gears, John. I said, I'm struggling to get up these hills. <laughs> but barred it in. Uh, and he's, he's stitched me up so many times. Uh, but I've got my own back plenty of times on him, that's for sure. Uh, I you. remember um, even on the golf course, you know, because I play golf with him, he's so competitive, really competitive. Uh, but I'm constantly winding him up and talking in his backswing and all, all, all the stuff that you do, babe. Just a bit of fun. <laughs> that's brilliant, man. That's brilliant. So, John, looking back, how did the, the move to Celtic under Tommy Burns come about? Well, what happened is I was still at Falkirk. Jim Jeffries had left to go to Harps. He was one. He was wanting to take me to Harps. I had done something like about five years at, at Falkirk. Bill McMurdo was my agent, Agent Orange. He was Morris Johnston's agent. That's right. Morris was in playing at Falkirk. He was on loan for Harps. 
So Paul was a boot, so that's why he sort of took to me a wee bit. We were in talking to the chairman at Falkirk. Uh, right, okay, right, fine, we're trying to do. We come out, we're sitting in the car park at Falkirk, and the phone went. And he says, Ah, he says, I'm sitting with a lad right now. And Bill McMurdo goes, It's Tommy Burns. And I'm going, Aye. So he comes on and he says, Listen, Tommy Burns here, Glasgow Celtic. I says, Fuck off, Morris, stop taking that piss. I thought it was <laughs> Morris Johnston. <laughs> I says, You're, says, You're taking that piss, Morris. And I looked at Bill McMurdo, and Bill McMurdo's going, Tommy Burns. So I says, Aye, he says, Give me the phone. He says, Aye. He says, Before it was a wind up, he says, Listen, I'm going to, I want to sign him. He says, Bob McMurdo says, right, come to my house in Uddingston. He says, we'll do it right now. He says, fine. Bob McMurdo says, would you hang? I says, aye, definitely. He says, uh, listen, he says, you've got one phone call. I phoned my missus and I says, listen, I've got a chance. I've got to talk to Celtic. He says, I've got a chance of signing for him. I says, go, do, go and get my old man and tell my old man. My old man's in the boozer on the never, never. Right? <laughs> I see the angle of the and says, listen, he says, I think you has got to sign for something. He went back in. Drinks all around, put it on the sleeve. Oh, brilliant, man. <laughs> brilliant, man. That's, that's what it would be. I went through to Erdingston, Bill McMurdo's, and I walked into the suits and it was like walking into many Ibrox. I'm not joking, I had the big Rangers crested carpet in the middle, red, white and blue. He was going up the stair to put a Ranger strip. I'm flapping. I'm saying, Bill, what are you doing? I says, come on, let's be... Don't you worry, he's got the, he's got the cup suit, Rangers cups. Next again, minute, ding dong, in walked uh, TB and uh, Billy Stark. Hi, how you doing? Uh, no problem. Gave him a cup of tea in the Rangers mugs. The two of them were just, they were laughing. They found it so, so funny. And then they, they went in, done the deal. And that was it. Come out, shook hands on it. And the thing about it, Fergus McCann didn't know he was signing me. He just said, right, I've got to sign him. <laughs> and took the chance. So the next again, they, they were playing... Celtic were playing Newcastle, they were opening a new stand oh. and Rod Stewart was coming in to do the stand, open the stand. Bob McMurdo was the agent for Rod Stewart, so he was at Parkhead with me in the morning doing the medical and then we were standing about, he says, come on, come with me. He says, we'll go and meet the, the, the plane coming in. In comes a jet, Rod Stewart, comes down the stairs, says, this is uh, John Yogi Hughes, just signed for Celtic. And he just says, it's something I wanted wanted to do all my life, wish me all the best. And they all jumped in the limo and left me <laughs> left me stuck at the airport. I had to jump in with a snapper to get back to park <laughs> to get back to park head to watch a game. And made my debut made my debut on the Monday against Liverpool. Ian Rush, McManaman, Fowler, all these guys. And I never had a nerve in my body. That was the last time my fear come to see me play. He was a big Celtic man, my old man. And he wasn't in great health. And I made my debut. And I can remember it, we were high up the pitch. And uh, McManaman went on one of the mazy runs. And all the grass was in behind and he knocked it to go. And I just gave him the clothesline, a body check clothesline. Took the yellow card and the place. Do you know what? I was just about to say there, that was my first game at Celtic Park under my season ticket. And I remember that, and I remember the roar when you put him in his arse, man. It was, it was like, yes, we've got a fucking centre half now, do you know what I mean? Well, that's what it was. It was like, well, you know what you're getting. I wear my heart on my sleeve and anything to win the game. And um, and that was it. And then for there, it was just, it was like, I went there when I was 31. So you're thinking you've done all your apprenticeship, you've done all your learning. It was just up another two gears for what I was used to. No disrespect to Falkirk under Jim and Bully, two guys that, if it wasn't for these guys, I might have had the chance of going down a different path. They got me at the right time, kept me at the football. Um, and I loved it. I loved everything about Falkirk and the training. But when you went to Celtic, it was like, wow, what is this all about? You're talking about guys like Van Hoydonk, Cadetti, Collins, McStay, Granty, uh, Andres, Tom, uh, and the madman coming, the Canio. The Canio. Um, Unbelievable, but the standard they train in, you, you, you'll probably know all the rondo they all do 7v2, 6v2 in the middle. Well, I was always one of the two in the middle yeah, because I, I, I always kept giving the ball away the standard and the quality of the rondos. 
and put gear the ball away. But you soon get an up to speed. You say, right, come on, get up to speed. Get up to speed. You know what was after. Um, and it was great. But I always found the games easier in the training. I felt the, I felt the training. We trained at that much uh, intensity and that many demands on us. We could play old v young and it would kick off. And if it didn't kick off, TB would start it. He would put a tackle in. And next day in minute, it would be up a notch and we would all be getting anything to win that game. And Did you ever very square close with the canio? No, no, he kept away from me. He was away from me. He's not like that. He had a big sleep. That's how good, what was his style, like Tommy Burns, how good a manager was he, John? What was his style like? Miles in front. Tommy oh. Burns was Pep Guardiola the other day. Miles in front. Everything that you want, if you want to do as a coach and a manager, the, even when I, I help for the SFA and I tutor the B and the A badges, so I got all the coaches coming through. Bruni was on in my group last year. He's got a right good chance of being a coach. Right. There's so many facets of what you need. And one of them is to go on and demonstrate. Tommy Burns played in the... If he played in the old V Young, he was the best player on the pitch. He was outstanding. What a footballer. But his knowledge of the game, showing you your passes, being a centre-half, taking time out with you, talking to you, his man management, his people skills, uh, looking after you. But just seeing that's how simple the game is. You know, I can remember playing Aberdeen Remember Collins, I think we beat them 3-2. I think it was the first couple of games of the season. It was the first game and it was 2 nothing at half-time in Aberdeen and we beat them 3-2. Collins scored a goal with outside the left foot right in the top Aye. corner. That's right. We were getting beat 2-0 and I was watching, the, I was, it wasn't that long ago, I was, that long ago I was watching the game at Come On Television and Aberdeen were winning 2-0 and the camera went on Tommy Burns and they just standing like that. Passing the ball, pass the ball, pass the ball. And it was all that stuff, you know, pass it to suck it out, to get in there, to create space and all that stuff. And every one of them played a part and it was fantastic to play in. And honestly, when you when you run out, when, you, when you're like myself and you've no made the grade at that age at 16 and you get to the, the top, any young kid in Scotland to play for any half an old firm, to go and play for Celtic, and run out in front of 60,000 in the tunes. Here's on the back of your neck, stand up. Absolutely stand up. And to get to do that and play in Europe and play with the players, I'm a lucky boy, really, really grateful. How, how, how big a thing was it for you to realise that dream and get your dad to be there? Uh, obviously, oh, he didn't keep well, but he got to see you playing for Celtic once. Well, I buried my dad in my number five, and that's what I keep saying. You know, everybody, um, you've done it, nobody can take it away from you. You know, you, you can get credit all oh, and all that. Fine. I've done it. I never let myself do. Uh, I gave it everything I've got. Uh, I conducted myself in the best that I could. And just to have that opportunity. And when my dad died, I, I buried him in the strip with a number five on it, the one that I kept. It was all torn, but uh, torn, and I saw it, and that was that was it. You know, superstition, all that stuff. And uh, I buried them in it, so it was absolutely fantastic. It was, it was something. That, it was a dream come true. My mother had died years and years before, and she was, a, she was, a, you know, I've got uh, three big sisters, two big brothers. I'm the youngest, and we had a real hard upbringing. No much money about, and all that. But with my mum always says, get into the football, get into the football. Well, you, I lost a brother uh, with drugs. He died at the age of 30. And I'm always grateful and thankful that for me, I had the football. He was a great player, but it just, it was the football that kept me on the straight and narrow, kept training two nights a week. And even at times, if I went AWOL when I was a young kid, my coach, an unsung hero for the juvenile was a guy called Alan Docherty. Many a time he would bang on the door and say, get your gear, we're going training. Because you knew it was the football that kept you going, kept you going and kept you away from the wrong crowd. And that was it. So to get for there, no make it, play the juniors, come through the hard way and get to the top and play for Celtic in Europe as well and play with all the great players you're saying to yourself. Aye, well done. I, it's, like, I'm a Rangers fan, right? But I'm sitting here listening to this and I've got goosebumps thinking about it. 
that you did have the, the opportunity to do that and play. It's, it's funny when you're saying as well, playing at Parkhead with the tune zone and all that. I think that sounds brilliant being a player and hearing the music and the roar of the crowd. Must be no better feeling in the world, man. It's unbelievable. Even now, my oldest, my oldest daughter, uh, she used to come and watch Hibs when I was manager of Hibs. And her, uh, three or four years ago, she always says what she wanted to go to an old firm game. And I says to her, going beside the Green Brigade. And I says, and we got them tickets and her and they went in, she come back, she says, what an experience. What an experience that is. She says, the place was jumping. And even now, I've, I've done my time and I'm a coach and a manager and all that. But when I still, you still go back and you look at it and, you know, 67. I say game. Oh, hey, come on, Spags, for joining us. <laughs> <laughs> How, right, you're saying all that there, right, and obviously I can, it's obvious your love for Celtic, right? How hard was it to leave Celtic when you went to Hibs, when Hibs came calling? Easy. Uh, it I, was easy. There was a few things. Uh, uh, I had come in and took over for a big uh, Tony Mowbray, and then he had signed Stubbsy, obviously, to take over for me, but he pulled me and said, listen, you have to fight for your place and all that stuff. And I'm saying, right, but you're not going to spend that amount of money and you're not going to play. Brian O'Neill was coming back for an injury, so there was real competition for there. There was two or three clubs sniffing about, wanting to uh, take me on loan or wanting to buy me. And I always kept me up, Tommy Bonds, come on up, really when I said, no, no, for me, one or two other clubs. And then, uh, right, okay, and I was still training away, training away. And then he come and he put me into his office. He says, I think this one might uh, suit you. He says, I think you might fancy this one. I says, what is it? He says, it's Hibs. And I just leaned over and shook his hand and says, thanks very much. He went, no, no, you've just to go to talk to him. I says, listen, <laughs> I just says, absolutely fantastic. Wish you well. And he just started laughing. He says, I knew that. Because as a kid, I was a Celtic supporter up to the age of 14, 15. 14, I used to go to the Leaf Celtic supporters bus left for the fit and leaf walk and went through. But when I started uh, playing, that was because I played on a Sunday. When the juveniles changed to a Saturday, I could play my game and only uh, I could get up to Easter Road. And that's when I changed and started watching Hibs. So when Hibs right. come in under Jockey Scott, because Jockey Scott had the reputation of being a fantastic coach. And when I went there, uh, I wasn't disappointed. It was, it was absolutely brilliant. But then I'm coming for Celtic being, now I've got it all on my shoulders, being a local boy, born and bred oh. leafer, on my shoulders with the pressure. He's saying, right, come on and let's go. Uh, but I loved it. Absolutely loved it. I can remember coming back with Gordon Marshall, coming back and I says to Marsh, I say, it's been a pleasure. I played with big Gordon Marshall at Falkirk and I was grateful and thankful he was there. He was my travelling partner for Edinburgh. And I says to him, I says, it's been a pleasure. No, no, I says, no, no, I says, that'll be it. And I says, and that was it, I went to Hibs. But it wasn't a great, Jockey Scott lost his job, and then Jim Duffy come in to try and rescue it a bit. And I felt, even now, looking back, it's something that you're sort of saying to yourself, did I give these two guys everything that I had? Could I have done a little bit more? And you sort of, I take the responsibility and blame on myself, being a local boy. Mm-hmm. You know, but that's the way football was. And when Jim Duffy come in, we went into that. It was the first year of the playoffs. We played Airdrie in a playoff to stay and we beat them. It wasn't a great game. It was a two-leg hang. It wasn't a great game. The two games, the ball was up in the air all the time. But we stayed in the Premier League. And then the next again year, we were struggling and Jim lost his job and big Alec McLeish come in. So I look back at the two times and say, could I have done more? And you're always questioning yourself, picked up a few injuries. But then when Big Alec come in, we still, we, we couldn't stay in the, in the league and we got relegated. And that's been my biggest dis- my disappointment in football, Aye. getting relegated for Hibs. It really, really hurt me. But what happened was, Rod Petrie had just come in uh, to look after the club and there was a little bit still, didn't really know uh, the landscape of the football and how it worked. So Big Alec was right on top of him in terms of the quality of play. And you're talking about guys like Sozie, Mixu, Latape, Dirk Lehman. Me being a player and a supporter, 
I'm then going, oh, this is what Habs are all about. This is what the fans want. This is what I wanted. This is what now you could see the place. Yeah, you could see the team going places. And we're thankful that we got back right up to the Premier League after that one year in the first division. Um, right back up in the uh, Premier League and got another year at it. And I enjoyed working, every manager, I enjoyed working with Big Alec McLeish. I really enjoyed working with Jim Duffy, Jockey Scott. There's no been one that I've been disappointed in. Everyone's got their own different ways to go about it. But you pick up bits and pieces. Uh, but for total, total football and being out there and really capturing your imagination, Tommy Burns was... Tommy Burns. Tommy Burns. Aye. But I'll always be grateful to Jim Jeffries and Billy Brown. Uh, they done it different. They know they never had that kind of money to attract the players, so they had to really bring the real good, strong character to the dressing room. Real, and you I mean you're talking about characters? You're talking about nutcases. <laughs> Many times it, I'm serious, but guys, it was like I'm not getting beat the day, and got a bit about themselves. And the guys, and that's probably for for the spirit and the camaraderie at my playing time. At Falkirk has probably been the best uh, dressing room I've been in. It was absolutely... You know Silky's mate, Stephen Cody. Do you know Cody? Aye, I know Cody, aye. You would, go into, you would go into the Falkirk dressing room and the banter and the spirit and you would go in there uh, and you turn your back, your clothes would be gone. They would be floating in a big bath or they would be up the flagpole, your socks. Honestly, it was... A guy, one of the boys come in with a new car, showing his new car, look at this and all that. Aye. So we went on the minibus away to train him. Next again, minute, the new car turns up in the training pitch, Cody's driving it right across the training pitch, trying to run all the boys over. <laughs> Being all the donuts and like, hand turns. What that? That, was the kind of thing, that was the kind of thing that went on. It was absolutely, and it was all done in good spirit and good fun uh, and a, a right good time. But as I say, you move on and some of the characters that you meet in football, even now, you know, if you play and you go up the tune, my missus refused to go shop with me because every 20, how are you doing? How's the football? What's this? Who's that? Guys you played against straight away back in the juniors and all that stuff. So, as I say, Big Alec come in uh, and he was different class, Big Alec. He would come on the training pitch and he would be one of the best players on the training pitch. And every now and then he would really have a go at someone and really bring them right down and I says to him after training once I says hey, Gaffer I says no you were a bit tough and he, he pulled me he says come here he says what he says see if they cannot handle me on a, he says he was testing their character if they cannot handle me on a training pitch how are they going to handle Parkhead and Ibrox and I says to him I went oh I says is that the way Sir Alex he went Yogi he says look at the characters in my Aberdeen team him Wally Muller Kennedy, right back, Doug Rudvey, Simpson, John McMaster, McGee, Dougal McDougal. You're talking about, near no wonder they won what they won and had the, the success that they had because what I've said to you, that, that character, they just know the, the will to win. And then when you look at Sir Alex when he's went to Manchester United after a while, Brian Robson, Bruce, Pallister, Keane, you know, it's, they 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 strong characters, they winners, they leaders. No, not just one leader, they're all leaders. Mm-hmm. And that's what Big Alec was all about. And Zach's very similar to Jim Jeffries. See, when you're saying how much, like, obviously you felt respon- you took a lot of responsibility when you were at Hibs and then when you went down. Was there ever players in that Hibs team that you felt you had to grab the scuff in it and go, you need to get your fucking finger out? Well, I definitely, I was listening, I'd done a wee bit on that Gary O'Connor uh, interview the other day. Gary was a young boy at Hibs when, when I was the captain there. And I was listening after the cup final, I never knew that, after the cup final, he says they were, they were fighting and there was fisticuffs and all that. All my time in football and all the dressing rooms I've been in, I've never, never seen it or never been involved in anything like that. The dressing room I was in at Falkirk, I was a captain, I run it. So if anybody had some I would just say, hey, it's the gaffers, and you run it that way. Oh, many a time, many a time you would go, like the gaffer would give you an order and say, can you have a word with him? And you, you had a word with him and he would say, listen, he says, how are you feeling? And even now, looking back with all the mental health issues that are going on, 
you're looking back now and you say, you never know, the guy might just be suffering a wee bit or lack of confidence. So even back when you go and address things, you're addressing and say, we need a wee bit more with you, but I'm here to help you. What can I do for you? What can I do for you? What, what, what do you need me? What do you want from me? Uh, and anything like that. So, and that was the way it was done. Um, but football pitches and on the training pitches, fistic cuffs and all that stuff. Oh, there's plenty of that goes on, but I've never been involved in any of it. Honestly, I just you get kicked, you just get up, you get on with it, and you just go, oh, well, you, you, you take it, you dish it out, and that was it. And I just love to train. Um, I absolutely love training and everything about it. Uh, even now, I'm going to tell you something. I've talked for well, we right through the career I've had as a player and getting there and playing for Celtic and Europe and all the players and Hibs and doing playing for the clubs I wanted to play, going on to coaching and management and getting success. I would give the whole lot up, everything up, to start again at 15. That's how much I, I miss it. I, I loved it. I absolutely loved it. I speak to ex players, I bump into them and say, Do you miss the game? No, 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 really. And I'm going, what? You're joking? No, 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 really. I'm saying to myself, well, what I would do just to compete, put a strip on, compete, get stuck in uh, and just play the game. I kept playing till I was 40 and I always play charity matches. Now what you see with the glasses. I can remember playing, I never had the contacts and I jumped up to head the ball and hit me flush right in the dish. Boom. <laughs> and I just said to myself, that's me finished. I'm never, that's it. I'm no, the ball's coming in the box and I could hardly see it. And somebody says, get the contacts. I says, yeah, I probably will, but I never did. But I still keep myself fit and I got the chance. You think, well, late 80s are long gone and uh, Moravchik, Henrik Larson charity match. You get the phone call, we go along, 60,000. I'm like, I'm like a kid in a sweetie shop. Say, oh, what a chance. <laughs> Boom, bang, play with all the legends and all that. <laughs> went in, met all the boys, went up the stairs, breakfast, met them all, how you doing, all that stuff. Wait, dude, boy, did Tom Boyd pick substitute? What are you doing, boy? I'm not going, son. Your son. I'm not, I've never been. Your son means Simon Donnelly. So Simon's fit as a fiddle. He still plays the seven of sides and all that. So we, Simon, says to him, just nudge us, says, yo, so watch us after 20 minutes. He says, me and you will be on. Because I was keeping myself really fit doing the cycling. 20 minutes, all the hands are gone up, hamstrings, calves, right, right on this ball. <laughs> Oh, there you go. It was absolutely brilliant. I can remember uh, opposite the, on the jungle side for the main stand, it got played wide and Jack Janowski has got the ball. We were all over the place. And I ran out and I started rubbing my hands. But on the sprint, rubbing my hands, I have to say, right, you're mine. Or oh, did you know he'd start doing all the double step overs, gain it all that? And I'm like, oh, no! <laughs> 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 I'm saying, oh, no, I forgot how good a player this guy was. I went, it just got there and I got a wee toe on it and a wee poked it out for a corner, a wee good defending. And I'm saying to myself, I turned around, Jackie McNamara, young Jackie standing there, just started laughing. He's just shaking his head. But to go back and get that and feel it again and what it was all like, it was absolutely fantastic. So tell, was, tell us this one, right? I'm sorry to go back to your time at Shellac, but. I'm not like, going to Falkirk here, Chris, come on. <laughs> Listen, hey, she once she scored a goal against Rangers, we need to talk about that, all right? So, the header at Ibrox, talk me through it. Well, what happened, that was in the last quarter of the season, it was uh, it was nip and tuck for the league. With that year, we only lost one game, and Rangers still won the league. We were playing some great football, so it was nip and tuck, and it was, I think it was about five minutes to go, it was St. Patrick's Day. I can remember that, and I blamed myself for the first one because I was picking up my clam, but the ball came in that flat. I couldn't get a jumper over the top of him, and he just flicked it, and it flew in the top corner. Man so man. I'm still playing with all that pressure on me, but to score the goal at Ibrox in the Celtic end, it's just... And I don't know the camera. Actually, I run into the Celtic, but the camera goes on Paul McStay. And it just comes back on me when it, and the tears, the tears are pouring down my face, the emotion, I couldn't control my emotions. I know what it meant. And I'm not sitting here patronising or anything like that. I know what it meant. You know what it meant? I can yeah. live with that for the next five to 20 years. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you've, not, you've not bought a drink yet. <laughs> uh, I know. And as I say, you're up against a Rangers team with 
Gorham, oh, what a goalkeeper he was, and a right good lad, Gorham, a right good lad. Gascoigne, uh, Loudrop, Goffey, I think it was John Brown, Robertson. Uh, Gascoigne was the best player I've ever played against. He was a magician. He was absolutely and tough as nails. Tough as nails. I can uh, remember I hit him once in an old, uh, old firm game, and I knew I left a wee bit of knee in there. And I says, he'll not come back for that. And I says, I, I thought I'd give him a dead leg. Now nah, up he just sprung and away he went again. Outstanding. What a footballer. Right Don't back you, style on producer John's face here, right? Because producer John is wanting to ask you about Falkirk, can not you, John? <laughs> well, of course. He's a Falkirk. Listen, Foggy <laughs> is in our player of the millennium. He's given me some of the greatest moments <laughs> as a player and as a manager as well. Falk, he's an absolute bona fide um, legend. In fact, Ro Yogi, I, I don't know when the statue uh, construction starts outside the stadium, but we'll wait and see. Well, do, right. John, you might know someone I actually got quoted saying that they should I be know, building uh, a statue, me. But you know what the reason was saying that because uh, it's a wee bit. It still hurts me now. It still rankles when I when I was leaving after I gave everything to Falkirk as a player and as a coach. My, my heart and soul. I work my socks off, uh, and. Right for a player, because you've probably seen it at Brockwell, but when I eventually, I was always grateful for getting the opportunity to coach and manage. Uh, and we worked ever so hard, Marcel and Brian Rice. And if you see the players that we brought to that club. Oh, I mean, talk, we, talk, talk me through Russell. Talk, talk me through Russell, because Russell. Well, you're talking about, well, you're talking, if I, before I get it, you're talking about Casper Smichael. You're talking about Tim Krul. You're talking about Stokesy. You're talking about Gilza. All the strikers that we had. Andy Thompson was a pro for me was the best one out the most natural one out of them all. Daryl Duffy. Daryl Duffy. Come, I don't know how Rangers let him go. And then Higdon, Pedro Martino, Gilza, Stokes, Stevie Lovell, Carol Finnegan. And everything was with Latape. And then uh, but we worked our we were constantly we had a great pride in saying we're the hardest workers. We were constantly doing England, watching our reserve games, uh, got to know them all. And that's why they all know you're doing your work. So they say, well, they're workers. So, And then we had an environment where we the players would want to come. It wasn't like it was jumpers for goalposts. We, we really built the club up. Eventually, we were in at Stirling University. We, we had the run it. They were right in it with us. It was absolutely fantastic. But Russell, when he come, he would he left Hibs, went to Rangers, and then he ended up at Dundee United. And he think it that nah, no, he, he, it wasn't working out for him. And then he was basically retired, but still in Glasgow at the age of 32, 33. So I got in touch with him. I said, "What he come in? He come in. He says he'll play for a couple of seasons. I think he played till he was 38, 40. He was absolutely outstanding. He's the best player I've ever played with. And I know you're Away you go. You played with the Canio, your chancer. Uh, the Canio. <laughs> can you tie you that piece of shoelaces? No, I totally understand up. everybody says this, that, and you can judge it where the things that like Tappy could do. And probably because I've seen it every day, left foot, right foot, never dive into me with nothing. You would, you would think he had eyes in the back, he said. He was an absolute genius. And yet he was a so humble, great guy. Help you, you know, Russell and Brent. I'll take the trialist to come and stay with me, Russell. I'll take. I've got two trials that can come and stay with me, and pick, uh, all that stuff. He was magnificent. And then you would be picking a team. You'd go to Parkhead, Ibrox, and you'd be going through it. And you'd do all your tactics. You'd be going through it. You'd right back, left back, right, and you'd get to Russell. And say, Russell, come here, where's Russell? All the boys. You have that fag. The smoke could be a <laughs> gaffer. I know what I'm doing, trust me. I know what I'm doing, right? I do it and be a man of the match. He was, it never phased him. He used to laugh. He was outstanding. Um, what a footballer. What a football player that guy was. And the reason I say that is anything he could do with his right foot, his left foot was just as good. We had, we had Marvin Andrews on the show a couple of weeks back, right? And he was telling us that back in Trinidad and Tobago, Russell's far more famous than Dwight York. You asked them mm -hmm. who's the best footballer that ever played for Trinidad, and they all say Russell rather than Dwight York. Well, that's what that wouldn't surprise me, but that's the three ball, Latape, Yorkie, and Brian Lara. That's, right. that's the three ball. And a couple of I left the I left Hibs, I went into the pub game, I was still playing at Air United. 
and I see I go back in touch with Russell. I see Russell. I see any chance he's coming in and just making a wee appearance in the pub. He says I'll be doing Saturday. I never thought anything of it. I never thought anything. I'm just pouring pints and all that and batting away and dumping and diving. I how you doing? Next day, minute the doors open up. <laughs> in walks Latapi, Brian Lara, and about f- five or six, six feet four, six feet five, fast bowlers for the West Indies. They were in Edinburgh. They were in Edinburgh playing. So and Latapi says, right, do me knee. And, and, this, and it wasn't a case he's staying for 10 minutes. They were in there for about two hours. All the boys are like, oh, what's going on here? I got Brian Lara, legend. No and way, man. Other times, if York is coming up to see him, right, we're going to night out. And all the Falkirk boys, right, we're out in Glasgow, night out. Yorkie and all that stuff. Come on. Russell, no messing in Yorkie. Just right to the F guys. Uh, oh, yeah. But I seen, uh, I, seen oh, Yorkie, I seen Yorkie picking his best 11. On this, on the sky once. Lap, he's he in actually it. turned around and sees the best player, Latapi. Aye. It was yeah. unbelievable. It used to not, not make me. Every day in life, just used to look that way. And I used to dive in nuts. Many a time he'd come nuts and just start laughing. I'm fucking going to call you Latapi. And he just used to laugh. <laughs> he had me on toast, honestly. He had me on <laughs> toast. <laughs> but he was an absolute genius. It was an absolute... The other time was... Uh, back in Trinidad, um, as I say, that was it. That's the street ball. I think Russell, when he first came to Falkirk, he couldn't even hold a golf club. When he left Inverness, he was playing off his scratch golf. And Yorkie, I think Yorkie's a scratch golfer, and I think uh, Lara's a scratch golfer. So they try and play on all the pro arms over that way. Um, Lara's got a, a ranch, and he's went in, he's got in at night, and Brian Lara says to him, listen, Russell, he says, uh, watch what you're doing, because I've got a few other guests. Russell says, I know what So he gets up in the morning, comes down in the kitchen, and a guy's in the fridge. Russell goes, morning, the guy pulls his seat back in the fridge and goes, morning, Mick Jagger. He <laughs> <laughs> serious? Russell tells you, is he serious? He went, ah, aye. He says, Mick Jagger right into his cricket. He says, love the cricket. He says, so Mick Jagger, he says, and all that. Russell, did no bother his backside. And what a guy, in the, what a guy when I took him into Inverness and into the coaching in terms of, see the game would be playing. The information it would put into your ear, you need to do that, change this, watch that, play three in the middle, watch this, take him on. And you would just see it. He could see the game, see the way the game was getting played, Pam out. He would tell you how he made it. was brilliant. He was... I'm absolutely, and he's, he's a great lad. I've never heard from him. The last I heard, <laughs> the last I heard, there was a manager in Barbados. Aye. If there's a team you want to manage, it's fucking Barbados, isn't it? Well, <laughs> I can, I can just see. Too, so. I can just Pretty see deserved. Russell Latape. Russell Latape being the manager of Barbados, Dwight Yorkie's assistant, and Mick Jagger, the kit man. Oh, I know, I'll throw you there. Mick, Mick Jagger does a half-time entertainment. <laughs> oh, unbelievable. We need to ask you, like, before we go, right, we need to ask you, like, Inverness, lifting the trophy, how good did that feel? Oh, magnificent. Inverness. I knew what I was going into when I went up there. I'd done my due diligence and I needed to get back into the game. Aye. I needed to get back into the game. It was when we beat Celtic in the semi-final. We got lucky and we beat Celtic. But as soon as Celtic were doing the 10 men, there was only one winner the way my team's play and keep the ball. Yeah. Uh, and then, uh, we were massive underdogs against Celtic. We had nothing to lose and that was the mindset. Now we're in the final. We're the Premier League team. We're now the favourites. It's Falkirk who's the underdogs. And it's a whole different mindset. But the preparation, everything we've done was fantastic. And uh, to go and win the cup, to go and win it, it'll never be repeated. I don't think it will ever be repeated. And I'll tell you why. Aye, you'll get, a, you'll get a lower league club maybe getting there and winning the Scottish Cup. But if you look at the league as well, in the SPL, we also finished third in the league that year. Aye. You know, so the whole thing to do it with a provincial club. And that's where I take, oh, where's your medals? Where's your strips? Where's that? It's nothing about that's not what's important for me. What's important for me is when you get these kind of guys, you need to get them on the coaching pitch and coach them and coach them and coach them. And when you see it coming to fruition, Aye. and these these guys implementing all your training ideas and getting success, that's what that's what football is all about. That's what it's all about. It was absolutely fantastic. Don't ask me what happened after we won it because 
I can't remember getting off the team bus the time I got back to Inverness. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you should have like a, you could have a statue in Inverness or not. Oh, I know, <laughs> aye, aye. A statue in Falkirk, a statue in Inverness, man. man. I forgot to tell you, you see that Falkirk thing? That Falkirk thing was for everything that I'd done at Falkirk. It was when I was leaving to go to Hibs. They aye. says to me, they couldn't get a deal, and they says to me, give up your Scottish Cup, because the last game was a Scottish Cup final. We kept them in the league and took them into Europe. And he says, give up your three bonuses and we'll, there'll be, that'll be the compensation for Hibs. And I'm saying to myself, listen, I've worked my socks off for that. Absolutely everything. And everything I've gave to the club and you're asking me to do that. And that's when I turn around and says, Christ, give up my bonuses, you should be building a statue. <laughs> <laughs> and that, and I still, it still rankles with Aye. me a little bit. Uh, but that was it. But to get to Inverness, brilliant. And the boys at Inverness, I never knew I had a diamond in the rough. I went in there, right, what have I got? I knew Shinny and all the boys. I'd done my due diligence. And then I went to watch a kids training and there was this wee diamond just taking the piss, Ryan Christie. And I says to the coach, I says, who's that? He says, that, that's Charlie's boy, Ryan Christie. I says, he's with the first team. Oh, we are the first team. That was him, never looked back. As soon as he, as soon as he says, listen, you're training with the first team, he just went for there. Whoa. Right. That's what he needed. He was off right. and he was not making the boys. And it was just, he just seen the game. It was like, it was a wee bit like Latapi. And you just knew there's someone special in this kid. There's a genius in there. Uh, and you just have to nurture him and bring him through. And, you know, and you take a great, great pride for uh, you play a wee part in his, where he is now. You've just played his right. game is, same as Arfield, you know, I spoke to Arfield the other day there, keep in touch with all the boys and you played a wee part in their development and where they are. And some of the players up at Inverness was, and taking them into Europe as well, it was great, it was great. And even now, as I say, I sort of say to myself, I'll take a couple of years off, I'm now sort of really looking to get back in, I want to get back in. Mm -hmm. I think yeah. there's a change. I'm seeing a change in Scottish football for the supporters, seeing Celtic and Rangers and the style of football. I'm thinking that if, I'm thinking that the supporters now want the game to be played properly. You need to pass the ball. Your goalkeepers party it. You know, you need to pass it out. You're an extra player. And I think the fans are really starting to see, oh, this is the way the game's played. That's the way I want to see the game's played. And mm -hmm. if it's no played like that, I think the fans are now clever enough to say, whoa, I we won. But I want to dominate the ball. I want to really, you know, really want to. And I think I can see a change in, in just a wee change in Scottish football and uh, outlook of supporters to say it's not all about winning. It's not all about winning. It's about doing it properly. And, and I want to be part of that because that's the style of football I like to play. I'm sure you will, John. I'm sure you'll get in our club soon, mate. I'm sure you will. I can see if there's no... If Could be that like, Rangers job if Jared doesn't win anything. One <laughs> 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 second, it's Ross Wilson. He's right out the door. Right enough, bye. <laughs> Big staunch yogi standing in the touchline at Ibrox. Yeah, uh, <laughs> imagine Brogues. that, eh? A <laughs> pair of brown brogues and a fucking cardigan. <laughs> 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 hey, John, every, every week on Football Daft, right, we have a 90-second Football Daft quiz. You up for it? Aye, on we go. Right, so every week we do it, right. On the leaderboard at the moment, at the top of the leaderboard is Mark Wilson and Keith Lasley. They're joined on 14. The good doctor, Kenny Duker and Kevin Harper are just behind in second place with 13. Barry Ferguson and your former co-manager, Owen Coyle, are joined on 12. Other selected scores include Ian Murray on seven, Jim Leishman on five, Big Mick Sue on three. But at the bottom of the table, strongest man in football, holding them all up, is David McCracken on one. Anybody want to beat in that list there? Uh, I want to go right to the top. Who's at the top? You've got Mark Wilson and Keith Lasley. Both of them are on 14. There we go. By the way, I've had a wee scout through these questions, John. Some of these are fucking... Some of these are difficult this week. I, I can't... Oh, he's chucked you under the bus, Yogi. Yeah. He's chucked you under the bus. <laughs> Great, right, let's go for it. Questions, big man. Right, okay, Doc. Right, John, are you ready with the 90 seconds on the clock? Remember, you can't pass, Yogi. You have to get an answer. Is pass not an answer? No, no pass. Say, Maybe. If, you anything, if you don't know, just say anything, right? Right. <laughs> right, we're ready, John. Yep, All ready. Right. And now, who will Celtic face in the next league of the Champions League? 
Swedish team, Dürr Gardens. Is it Dürr Gardens? Swedish what is the name team. of Edinburgh City's home ground? Spartans. Who are the current sponsors of the League Cup? No, no. No comment. At what team <laughs> did you have your best win ratio as manager? Hibs. What English team are nicknamed the Lactics? Wigan. Which Rangers player moved to Aberdeen this week? Young midfielder, his brother plays in goals for Livingston. Um, come back to that. <laughs> How many points are Hibs on at the moment? Ten. How many goals did you score for Celtic? Two. In which Scottish ground would you find a famous hedgerow by the side of the ground? Breakin. What colour is Arbroath's home strip? Maroon. In what year were Falkirk formed? 18... 80... 83. In what year did you join Hartlepool as manager? Time! Oh. You can answer that though, John. He's already asked it. So you McCrory! McCrory! Aberdeen! <laughs> <laughs> Ross McCrory! Get it! That was the year! Right. Wigan. Right. Oh, good night. We'll go through the wrong answers, John. Um, Celtic will face uh, Fenris Barros in the next round of the Champions League. Yeah. We'll the other ones that won. Uh, Edinburgh City's Ainsley Park. Ainsley uh, Park. That's uh, where Spartans play, ain't it? Yeah. Um, right. League Cup sponsored by Betfred. Um, you had your best win ratio as a Livingston manager, apparently, 44.4%. Is that right? By the way, that's unhealthy. What yeah. a record that is. Yeah. Um, I mean, it was a year. Hibs are on 10 points. You got Ross McCrory. I'll give you Ross McCrory. Uh, Falkirk formed in 1876 and you joined Hartlepool in 2012. So give me, you've got to give you the Ross McCrory one. So I'll give you six points, John. Oh, no, oh. Bad. no bad. Six points, yeah. mate. Six points. I wanted, I wanted you to get three. I like the way you say three. Shree. You say it like my grand. Shree. Three. <laughs> three. Yeah. Shree. I love right. that. That's because of the wee speech impediment there, right? Aye, well done, Gredo. But listen, but listen, but listen, an arsehole's always an arsehole. <laughs> oh, John, thanks for taking time out to join us, mate. I've really appreciated the chat. It's been brilliant, mate. Yeah, brother. Top boys. Take care, lads. Thanks, Thank, you, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Football daft with G4 Claims. Been involved in a road traffic accident. Get them now at notatfaultclaims.com Right, who no wins is back on Football Daft. It's the app that allows you to put your money where your mates are. If you don't know where it is, who knows wins is the social sports game where mates, family and colleagues put their wits for real money and, of course, bragging rights. You can download the free app to play directly against your pals in your own custom league or join one of their existing competitions. They will send you live updates as the games go on and you also get to wind up your mates in the group chat. Choose from football, rugby, horse racing and tennis or combine any of the sports in your league. Make your predictions on the outcomes of your chosen fixtures. For every result you guess correctly, you get a point in your league. At the end of the competition, whoever has got the most points wins and proves they're the top dog. Whether it's the cost of a round or something more substantial, choose your own entry fee and split the winner's pot as you see fit. But when it comes to the bragging rights, the winner takes all. So congrats to all the winners from last week as the pot gets split two ways after a lot of away wins. So get involved with our very own SPFL Football Daft League now. A £5 entry and you can take us on with the winner take it all. Missing a major, a major fixture this weekend, mind you. Oh no, Are sorry, they have not oh, no. That's cool. Right, so get involved with your own very own SPFL Football Daft League now and a £5 entry and you can take us all. The winner takes all. So Saturday, we've got Motherwell versus the Ackies with the Young Troops. Motherwell. I'm going to say Motherwell. Motherwell. Going, it's, got, ah, it's got to be Motherwell, isn't it? Full house, Motherwell. Rangers versus Kerry. Rangers. 
Rangers. Rangers. Rangers, another home one. St. Mirren versus Ross County. Tough Man. one. It's a tough Man. one. I'm going to go for draw. Draw. I'm going to say St. Mirren. one nothing. I'm going to say St. Mirren as well. Dundee United versus Celtic. I think Celtic will win. Celtic. Draw. Ooh. Oh. oh. No like you going against your team there, John. <laughs> I, I think Celtic will win. I think they'll be back. And winning ways. Aberdeen versus Livy on the Sunday. Aberdeen will take goals off him, I bet you. Stick on. <laughs> Absolute stick on. Stick on. Aye. Aberdeen, aye. I would say Aberdeen. It's always the way. A team plays well against my own for him next time. Watch this. Ross McCrory will get three assists. <laughs> <laughs> right, he's St Johnston versus the Hibbies. Hibs. 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 I'm going to go with a draw. Right, so get involved in our league right now by downloading the app on Google Play and the Apple App Store. Who knows wins? Put your money where your mates are. So, that's been a great show, guys. <laughs> Thoroughly enjoyed it. What about Big Yogi, yeah? Some boy. Oh, we touched on his in uh, Cali Fissel Scottish Cup win, um, but it would be nice to get him on again to talk about everything else, all these, how he, the stuff with Rafe Rovers have the way, the way he spoke reminded me of like, the Owen Coyle interview. You, you know what? The way he spoke was brilliant. See how he went on about how much he loves football. It makes you want him to be back and be as successful yes. as possible. You know Aye, what I mean? He's a character as well, isn't he? You need Aye. characters in the game. That's what I mean. That's what I mean. Like we've obviously we've had Jim Leishman uh, on the show, and we've we've had Yogi as well, and we've had uh, Dick Campbell, and they're all cut for the same kind of cloth. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like yes. proper proper characters of Scottish football. Right, trip as well. I'm going to boost and go and cook my dinner. Right. What are you having? I'm going to the range in Kilmarnock. No idea yet, mate. No idea. The one where? The range. Is it no the range you call it? The range. Uh, Ah, I thought you meant the driving range you were going to play golf. Oh, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> it's great, though, see for next week. I want you to have that guitar for the show. Mate, 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 well, first, oh, your mate, first live performance. Mate, you well, can do the outro on your guitar. Oh, right, mate, 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 mate. Yeah, look at right before I play the guitar, right? We need to find out. How'd you go on in Big Bra? Uh, oh, listen, there's, there's somebody at my door, actually. I need to go. Right. Oh, next week. Next week. Right, okay. Sign up. Yeah. Yeah. Forward slash football daft. Get Rangers daft and Celtic daft up there. You can buy t shirts shop.spreadshirt.co.uk forward slash football daft. And get us on Twitter at football daft, football daft podcast on Instagram, and football daft on Facebook. I'm By the right. way, I'm not even joking. I've got somebody at my door. I need to go. Right, see you Audio Frontier.